All right, looks like we're coming on board now. Let's get the chat up for everybody. And we're going to test those chats out real quick. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Test those chats out real quick. Hopefully you oh, guys yep. can hear me. We've got audio. Thank you, Twitch. Let's see if Twitch appears, and then let's see if the YouTubes appear. I'm getting them on my chat. Let's see if they show up. And they do. That is super duper. I'm excited that the chats appear. Let's get in there and just lower the font size on that dang old Twitch chat. Let's put it at 18. Yeah. Yeah. I'm liking that. And let's do the YouTube's chats and let's put them at a crispy 18 as well delicious that looks terrific okay so we're doing this on an off day today gang uh, normally I stream uh, Thursdays at 3 uh, however um, due to my wife's birthday yesterday I gotta push it back for a day and I can only stream for about an hour and some change so about 4 15 10 after 4 I gotta be jet setting out of here. So I figured we'd do something fun and quick today and talk about creating a character in fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. I had some questions about DD &D, uh, last week when we were playing the forest, so I figure what the heck. I got my webcam back up, which is awesome. That was an immense amount of stress, but uh, you know, hey, we're we're good to go now, guys. I rolled back like 97 different updates and kept it rolling, so can't. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy about that at least. Let's get out the old 3B here and do some doodles while we're waiting for people to show up. So yeah, we're going to be making a 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons characters. And anybody who gets in the chat by 3 o'clock will probably be helping out, picking race and class and all that kind of fun stuff. So... Usually when I do D&D uh, &D characters, one of the first things I do is actually just do some quick sketches here of things I might want to do. Like, uh, I just like to play around. I always like to get a feel for, you know, what the character looks like. That helps me visualize it. Just a wee bit in my, in my mind. So let's do, this guy is going to be human. I think. Yeah, let's make this dude human. And uh, this gives... I, I always like to start with like a character concept rather than just like going to town. The concepts can be pretty simple. Like, oh, dude is a knife thrower. Or, you know, he's a wizard, but he specializes in sea magic. And go from there. I know a lot of people who do it the other way. Like they like to start out with a, a character background or whatever, go from there. But uh, you could do it any way you want. That's just it. But my personal preference is to just kind of get a, a little bit of a concept down here. This guy looks kind of surly so far. So let's give him some eyebrows. Eyeballs. He's kind of looking this way a little bit. There we go. That's pretty good. Uh, shall he be wearing a helmet? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Definitely he should. Start with a broad rim here, and this is just free form, just going to town. 
give some horns, stuff like that. And let's give him some hair here. Bottom of ears. Let's give him some chops. Yeah. Some big old mutton chops. Nothing sells a character like mutton chops, you know. Well, let's give him a mustache, too. Real 70s style. I dig it. So, same. there's a character we can work with already. Just looking at this guy. Uh, he's got the mustaches, man. He's got a spiked helmet. I think he's probably going to be some sort of a, a fighter type guy. Yeah, fighters are a little more disciplined than barbarians. So, he's a fighter. We'll spike on the helmet there. He's an old soldier, man. He joined up with his country's, uh, you know, um, military when he was a youngin and really just kind of devoted his life to it. And now there's no war in whatever country he signed up for, so he's out in the world basically as a mercenary. Looking for adventure and treasure and stuff like that, so... He's got a heart of gold, although he doesn't show it very often. So see, I think that's that's great. That's a good way to start developing, you know, characters. And you can work with that. And then, like I said here, in a couple of minutes, we'll let some people come into the chat. If anybody's coming, I don't even know. As I said, this is an off day for me. We can get started here filling out our character sheet, make its choices, from the good old PHB, baby. And it'll be good good times. I personally am looking forward to it. Let's give him some male armor. And that's M-A-I-L, not M-A-L-E armor. That's a nice little portrait there. And that's one of the greatest things about being a player in D&D, is just letting your mind go crazy over your choices and stuff like that. How about we do another one real quick? Like I said, while we're waiting for people to come in. Hey, Peggy, how you doing today? Thanks for joining in on an on a off day at an off time. <laughs> I'm just doing some warm-up sketches here. We're waiting for people to come in. Then, like I said before, we're going to be making a talking about D&D &D and making a character all together, so it'll be fun. Let's give this guy a wide jaw here. I'm kind of a hunched back. And let's see here. Let's get him, we're going to make this guy half work, this guy up here. Everybody thinks half orc is barbarian, and that's totally fine. I, I like playing with cliches, but maybe this half orc here, maybe he was raised in a in a human town. I don't know, you know, half orcs. Maybe he was raised uh, to not be some brute. Maybe he was raised raised to be particularly intelligent. You know, so. Maybe he'll be a half-work uh, wizard. He's got lots of just base brute strength, but rather than cultivate that, maybe he's out there trying to learn everything he can about arcane magic. And he's fought an uphill battle his whole life about uh, people thinking he was just some, like, thug, when in reality he's pretty smart and wants to be a great wizard. Again, that's... I think a great starting point for a character concept. So let's give him some hair here. Long hair, ears back here. Hey, I hear you up uh, over here, uh, Peggy, up in Mars. I shoveled, I don't know what we got, two and a half feet, something like that. So 
that was great but now it's finally uh, finally starting to melt down for now so yeah although my garage is basically a swamp at this point <laughs> You know, the drain freezes up and ugh, gotta sluice it out. So let's see what kind of wizard's cap he's got on here. Maybe almost like a turban kind of a deal. There we go. Like the turban that's wrapped around the fez, kind of mystical. Maybe it's got some feathers kind of sticking out of it here and there. He's got arcane talismans around his neck. So yeah, you guys, you can have fun creating any kind of character you want. And that's the joy of it. All right. Oh, two inches of snow in Alabama? Yeah, I hear you. I, I can, I, I always hear, we have relatives that live in uh, Alabama, as well, or actually, I'm sorry, Georgia. But uh, we always hear that when it's, they just get a couple inches, they, everybody panics. And it makes sense, because you guys down there, you don't have salt, you don't have snow plows, you don't have the trucks to deal with them. So I get it, man. Two inches would keep me inside, that's for sure. Ugh. Yeah, we got we got snow upon snow. You learn how to drive in it up here in, in PA. I can't imagine the folks that live in like northern Michigan and stuff like that would have uh they'd be so used to just drive oh if you got four feet of snow, that's nothing. That's that's good driving weather right there. Alright. So let's put our doodles away for now. Let's get out our character sheet here. This is the official character sheet that D&D puts out. You can find a ton of fan-made stuff on the internet, but if you just want the official sheet, you can go to the Dungeons & Dragons website, and they have it there. I also put a link down there in the description on YouTube. So it's dnd.wizards.com slash articles slash features slash character sheets. And you can get your very own D&D character sheet. Okay, let's see here. Da, da, da. Bring the chat back up so I can read. And there we go. And this is pretty straightforward. If you've ever played D&D, this will look pretty familiar with your core abilities. This is the probably the most important part of the sheet right here on the side. Uh, stuff at the top like your name and your race and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah. It's, it's good stuff. So, first things first, let's get started. Let's roll up some stats. Now, again, there's a million different ways to do this, but you basically need to generate some numbers between 3 and 18. So, let me pull out some dice here. Let me get the ones with actual numbers on them. There we go. Uh, old school style is just roll 3d6, add them up in order, and you play whatever that is. You can do 3d6, put them wherever you want. The generally accepted modern role-playing game way to roll your character stats are 4d6. You drop the lowest. So we're just going to do that straight up. So I rolled super badly here. So remove the two. That leaves us with a whopping 7. So I'm going to put just a 7 right on the side. We do this 6 times for a 6 stats. Okay, the 1's the lowest here, so a 6, that's good. So that would be 11. Not terrible. Oh, that one's on the edge. Vinsky, okay, so... There we go. Again, an 11. There we go. That's a little more what I'm talking about. That would be a 13. Oh, devastating. 
<laughs> An eight. This might be one of the lowest powered characters I've seen in a while. We've got one roll left, guys, and let's hope for something good. Okay, I can work with, I can definitely work with that. That's a 15. <laughs> that, was, that was a little dicey there for a second, you guys. So, we got 7, 11, 11, 13, 8, and 15. All right, so that's good. Those are what we have to work with. Of course, high numbers are better. We'll explain that as we get a little more into it. Um, so, next up... We need to decide what race and class we want to play as. So to that, we're going to go to the player's handbook. <laughs> Pardon me. Now, I also put a link in the description for the basic rules, which gives you four classes and four races. So generally, the first thing we're going to do is pick our race. Chapter 2, right at the beginning of the book here. That's the first thing you do. We have a couple options, the common races being Dwarf, Elf, uh, where are we at? Halfling, and Human. Now you're going to want to talk to your DM, or if you're a DM, you're going to want to think about what the makeup of the world is. Uh, this assumes you're playing in like a Tolkien-type fantasy world where all these races are prevalent and it's generally human-centric, but heck, you could play an all-Dragonborn campaign or whatever. But for our purposes, we're just going to go with the basic rules. Now, then we got our weird races, the quote-unquote weird races that we can pick from. We got Dragonborn, which are humans who have descended from dragons. They have a little bit of magic in them. We've got Gnomes, who live in, like, the hills or the woods. And they're, like, little mystical halfling elf-type people. Um, we've got Half-Elves which are uh, the product of a human and elf union. They've got kind of a little bit of both races, but, but not 100% of either. Half-orc, same thing. Uh, it's a human and an orc mated and made a half-orc. And they've got a little bit like both races. We've got a tiefling, which is uh, a human and a demon or devil mated, made a tiefling. So they've got a little bit of the devil in them, as it were. And those are our core races that we can pick from. So if you guys have any race suggestions, throw it out there. Because uh, otherwise, I think I might roll a dice. So we'll take a minute here. Again, those races were Dwarf, Elf, Halfling, Human, Dragonborn, Gnome, uh, half elf, half orc, and tiefling. So let me know. We'll got, give you guys a minute here to decide. Um, I'm not going to go through all the ins and outs here of this, but uh, basically, when you're making a character, it's good to read in the manual and just kind of read about the different races and see what you like. And if we pick a race, then there's different traits over here that we're going to apply to our character. So we'll give you guys a minute or two here. Uh, if anybody else is on, and uh, if not, like I said, I'll just roll the old dice. So how many races is that total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Hey, Kevin, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. So we have nine races to pick from in Core D&D 5th Edition. Um, so Peggy says, roll the dice. Hey, Jared, how you doing today? Good to see you. Good to see you. We're making up a D&D character on the spot here for 5th Edition. We got the sheet. So out of our nine races, uh, Peggy says, roll the dice. The races for you guys who are just getting in, we got Human, Halfling, Dwarf, Elf, Dragonborn, Gnome, Half-Elf, Half-Orc, or Tiefling are core races. Jared Johnson says Tiefling. I'm, I'm down with Tiefling. So if anybody wants to second that up, we could do that. Or we can roll the dice. We'll give you guys 
Eh, like 30 seconds here. That sounds good. Now, I have to say, I, as far as core races go in 5th edition, I find uh, Tiefling a weird choice. Not, not necessarily that Tiefling is a weird race in general, but that the opposite, the Asimir, which is the um, half-human, half-angelic, or celestial creature, isn't in there, too. Hey, War Guy Films, how you doing today? He seconds Tiefling, so we're going with Tiefling. Kevin, nice. You got the three core for Christmas. That's awesome. Have you had a chance to take a look and uh, go over them? Because uh, I, I like it. I think it's a good addition, and uh, I think it's a lot of fun. So we're going to write Tiefling here up in the race category. And that's, let me just make sure, that's T-I-E. Yes. Tiefling. All right. So we're going to make ourselves a cool tiefling. Next thing I like to do is decide which class we're going to make. We'll get into the traits of a tiefling here later. Uh, as far as classes go, you guys, we've got a couple to choose from. Barba and I like this handy-dandy chart in the front. I wish they would have done this for the races, too. But a barbarian, a bard, a cleric, a druid, a fighter, a monk, a paladin, a ranger, a rogue, a sorcerer, a warlock, or a wizard. So you guys can decide amongst yourselves, and if you want to know more about a specific class, like what they do, just let me know and I can read anything. Um, I'll just give a quick description here, and it does give you a nice description about barbarians, uh, primitive warriors who enter a battle rage, a bard is a uh, essentially a musician, uh, but they're also good with, um, they're like a support character. They can cast some arcade magic. They can do a little bit of everything, which is cool. Uh, but they don't excel at anything. Um, a cleric is a person who casts divine magic, granted from the deity they serve. And they can be offensive or defensive, different things to pick from there. <coughs> a druid is like essentially a nature wizard. <clears throat> they cast spells about nature and stuff like that. They're all about uh, uh, nature and balance, stuff like that. A fighter is very straightforward. Uh, he's, he's a fighter. He gets a sword and hits things. He's a lot more disciplined than a barbarian, though. Hey, Gamer Spirit, what's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, a monk is a martial arts master. I always find that they don't... I feel like they never fit into D&D. &D. Uh, but, you know, it kind of works. It's It's fun. It's fun. Um, a paladin's a holy warrior, a ranger's kind of a, a, a nature warrior, kind of like the druid, but instead of spells, they're more uh, melee, even though they do get spells. A rogue is a thief picking locks and stealing treasure. <coughs> a sorcerer is like an X-Man mutant. <laughs> they have uh, innate magic. A warlock makes a pact with a mysterious entity to gain magic. And a wizard studies spells to get magic. So... What do you guys want? You guys pick. Otherwise, I'm just rolling the dice. And Gamer Spirit saw my shining video. That's awesome, man. Thank you for watching that. I've been uh, I've been doing some winter theme stuff, which has been fun. Mm. On Dungeons and Dragons, man, that's actually what we are doing right now. We're building a character, so we're going through it. We have already rolled our stats up, which I put down. Over here, we'll assign them to their areas later. And we picked our race, which is Tiefling. Now we're picking a class. So, Barbarian, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Fighter, Monk, Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, Sorcerer, Warlock, Wizard. That's 12. So, I'm just going to roll a 12 sided die for that, you guys. So, let me find a good old D12 in this mess. Aha! Here we go. And we are going to have ourselves a tiefling. Oh. <laughs> okay. There we go. There we go. That's three. We're going to make ourselves a tiefling cleric. And that's how it's going to be. So our class and level, we're going to put cleric. And what level are they at? We're going to start off at level 1. Pretty easy stuff. So at this point, what I'm going to do is go to the page here. Let's 
going to tell you all about it. Here's where you really want to look. Class features. Hit points. Hit die is 1d8 per level. So we're going to go find uh, hit die here. Ba -ba -ba. D8. We're level 1. We have 1 hit die. So 1d8. Um, we don't have our stats set yet, so we'll deal with our hit points a bit later. We're proficient with... And there should be a proficiencies here. Yep, right down here. Uh, and it says right in here, proficiencies. So I like to put it in light armor, medium armor, and shields. Okay, simple weapons. Easy peasy. Next thing up. Tools, we have none. We don't have to write that down. Saving throws, wisdom and charisma. So we're going to mark off wisdom. And charisma are our saving throws. And that's in this saving throws section. You just mark them off. There's a space to put numbers here, which we don't have yet. But we just need to know that those are our two saving throws. And our skills. We get to choose two from history, insight, medicine, persuasion and religion so that's kind of fun uh, I'm gonna immediately pick religion which should be in our skills list here religion is a skill that we currently have because that means we anytime we need to know about religion to make a roll on that that means we can add bonuses to it and the next thing would be Let's make this Tiefling Cleric kind of, um, I don't know if I want to make it a straight healer. You guys tell me what you want. If you want this guy to be a straight up healer, but you can have a lot of fun with clerics doing interesting things with them. So for the other thing, I'm going to choose Persuasion. Tieflings being, um, uh, what sort of I'm looking for? A little bit infernal, like half human, half demon creatures. Uh, maybe he's, he's real good at, he's got a, he's got a sly tongue. He can talk people into maybe joining his religion. Maybe he's kind of like uh, a cult for some sort of deity, you know, something like that. So maybe, yeah, maybe that's a good, that's a good character concept. Maybe our tiefling cleric here, uh, worships a deity that not many others want to do. And so he wants to persuade them like, Hey man, you should join up. Blah, 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 all that kind of fun stuff. So the next thing we need to know uh, is our most important um, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba 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 stat for a cleric, <clears throat> pardon me, is wisdom. Um, it says here that spell casting ability is wisdom modifier. So we're going to put our best stat into wisdom which is a 15, which I'm going to mark off down here so we can start popping these guys in. I'd like to do then, if he's that cult leader with the, uh, he's got the uh, real persuasive, we're going to put our next best stat into Charisma, 13. Uh, our 11, our, our dump stat, 7 and 8, that's pretty dang terrible here. Next, we're going to go back to the Tiefling, and I'll show you one thing real quick. I agree. We're going to go through that too, Kevin, here after we get these stats in. So this is where we get to Tiefling, and this is where we do our ability score. Your intelligence score increases by one, and your charisma score increases by two. So right then and there, we can erase this 13. Their charisma is bumped up to a 15. Their intelligence increases by one. I'd like them to be relatively intelligent so I am going to put an 11 there and that's going to bump it up to 12 with the plus one so we can cross that off constitution maybe they're a little bit weaker in that department they're going to get the seven in con so we've got an eight and eleven do I want them to be stronger or more dexterous well I imagine this guy being a little more sly so I'm going to put the eleven in the decks 
and the 8 into strength. That gives us our stats. Next, we're going to put in the modifier numbers. Uh, 8, 9 is negative 1. <laughs> Great. Uh, 10, 11 is 0. Neg 7 is negative 2. Oh, boy. <laughs> hey, Zelda Master, how you doing? Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be pretty uh, pretty interesting. Uh, an intelligence of twelve, not bad. That's a plus one. A wisdom of fifteen. Let's see, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen is a plus two, and a plus two for charisma. So I rolled pretty bad on my stats, but you know what? That's part of the fun of it. All right. Excellent. Uh, we don't need alignment. Size is medium. That's fine. Um, space walking speed is 30 feet, so speed, we can put 30 there. Um, I have dark vision, which I'll put in my features. And dark vision is 60 feet. <laughs> I'm going to run this guy through the Tomb of Horrors at first level with these stats. It's going to be good. It's going to be super good. <laughs> All right. I have uh, resistance to fire damage, which is good. <clears throat> Infernal Legacy, I have the Thaumaturgy can cantrip. Which is basically, it allows spooky things to happen around me. Like, uh, because I'm infernal, like suddenly windows will fly open or doors will slam shut. Or a little tremor in the earth and stuff like that. So that can be kind of fun to play with. And I speak, read, and write common and infernal. So is there a languages thing here? Yeah, over here. Common, which we shouldn't even need to write down, and infernal. Good deal. Our proficiency bonus at first level is plus two. It is for everybody in the game. Those don't uh, those don't increase until uh, what is it, every five levels, every six levels. Inspiration you either have or you don't. I currently have it. Check mark. I'm going to use this as my inspiration token. I like to give my players an inspiration token. So this thing that my dad had from the 70s is always fun to pass out for if somebody get, does something badass and gets inspiration. I give them this thing, and they can hand it back to me when they want to use their inspiration. So it's always fun to have a token like this. So, yeah, we're going to put that up there. <clears throat> Little props and things are always fun to have around. Our initiative is our dexterity modifier, which is zero. Yes. Good. <laughs> Excellent. And then we're going to go over back to cleric here. I know, right, Peggy? Like, that's, that's some, like, old school cosplay junk right there. I love it. <clears throat> okay, at first level... We get Spellcasting and a Divine Domain. So our Spellcasting, anytime we need to cast a spell, this is how this works. If we need to attack with a spell, the DC is, um, pardon me, the, the attack modifier is your proficiency bonus plus your wisdom modifier. So I'm going to write that down. Spell Attack. Proficiency bonus is 2, Wisdom modifier is 2, so I attack with spells at plus 4. Spell DC is 8 plus Proficiency bonus plus Wisdom modifier, so 8 plus 4. So spell DC is 12. That means if anybody has to roll, like uh, if I cast a spell and they have to roll a, uh, let's say, Dexterity, um roll to avoid it they have to roll a 12 or better so that's how you get that information <coughs> pardon me mm. okay 
Divine domain. This is where it gets kind of fun with clerics. Uh, we have to choose a domain related to our deity. So what deity are we going to serve? Well, thankfully in the player's handbook, and I really do dig this, in the back here, there are actually lists of different deities, which is a ton of fun. Uh, from different things, too. Egyptian deities, Norse deities, Greek deities, Celtic deities here. Um, and then here's de deities of the Forgotten Realms, Greyhawk, Dragonlance, Eberron, non-human deities. These are all different campaign settings. There's no spell jammer in here, unfortunately. Uh, they say in in this version that like Forgotten Realms is kind of the default. If you guys have any uh, deities you want to toss out there that our guy is into, well, let me know. But uh, being that, again, he's sly, maybe worships a deity that's not super on the up and up, let's pick something that's a little bit on the neutral or even the evil side, something kind of cool here. Um, something interesting. We've got... Beshaba, the goddess of misfortune, <laughs> could be fun. Baal, the god of murder, is kind of weird. Sirik, the god of lies, might might be kind of interesting if our guy is uh, he's got that he's got that charisma and, and you know he can talk people into things. Maybe that would be a fun one. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, let's see here. Loviatar, goddess of pain. <laughs> okay. I think I played a character that was a cleric of that way back in the day. Uh, Miliki. Oh, no, that's God of Forest. Okay, Mask, the God of Thieves. We could do something kind of interesting. Go over here. Dragonlance here, man. Uh, Chemosh, the God of the Undead. Or even into the Greyhawk deities. Neril, the God of Death. Or, uh, let's see. Vecna, God of Evil Secrets. It's always fun. <coughs> you know? So there's plenty out there. If you guys have anything, a worshiper of the Tarrasque. Man, I think that is... There was a Waker of the Beast in... Uh, what the heck was it? Way back in the day in uh, Dragon Magazine. <laughs> exactly, exactly, Jared. That's like, there's so much. And if you wanted to, you could just make up a deity too, you know? So, good stuff. Kill of more, god of the undead. So, we could do whatever, or we could just roll it randomly and see what we get and go from there. Um, but, and then in different books, there's different deities too that you can get. Like the old, let's see if I even have it here. I do not have the third edition deities and demigods. Dang it. Oh well. But for inch for uh, let's see here. For example, this is an old Heroes of Horror book. And they should have, if I'm not mistaken. This is a great book, by the way. I, I really recommend it if you're gonna run a horror campaign. It's got a lot of great information and stuff like that. <clears throat> There should be deities, and there's no index. Man, I hate that. No index. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I was going to look it up. Here's spells. There should be new... new... Um, cleric spells, or deities in here. I don't know. Either way, you should be able to find them in most books. Kevin, they do. It's free, Dragon Magazine. It's free, and it's online only, so you download it on your uh, phone or tablet. And it's actually been pretty good from everything I've read. It's been a lot of fun. Um, interesting stuff. They do a lot less, like, just pure... Um, well, that's, I love that picture there. <laughs> pure... Uh, What's what I'm looking for? Like crunchy rules, mechanical stuff. But they'll put out articles on like, oh, if you want to play in an aquatic thing or a lot of behind the scenes stuff too. So, not as good as it once was, but I'd still recommend grabbing it. All right, guys. So I'm just going to pick here. 
something fun. Let's go with, let's, oh. Ayaz, the god of pain and oppression here, whose uh, symbol is a grinning human skull. I don't know, that's, that's a little bit much. Um, let's do the god of lies here. Ba -ba 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 -ba, where was that? We'll do Vecna as old school, god of evil secrets. Who's neutral evil. So our deity is Vecna. Get back to Cleric here. Druids. Clerics. There we go. Hmm. Okay. So choose one domain related to your deity. Knowledge, life, light, nature, tempest, trickery, or war. Since Vecna is the god of evil secrets... I'm going to choose knowledge as my domain. They value learning and understanding above all. And so we get these knowledge domain spells. At first level, we get command and identify. So I'm going to write that here. I don't think there's a place for your deity up here, so I'm going to put... Deity Vecna. Just so we remember. Oh, chat's offline. Okay. Thank you. There we go. Oh, nope, it went away again. There we go. Thank you, Peggy. Vecna's old school. I, I dig it. All right, good deal. And blessings of knowledge. At first level, I learn two languages of my choice and become proficient in your choice of two of the following skills. Arcana, history, nature, or religion. So for my two skills, I like that. Uh, more knowledges are good for me. Uh, I already picked religion. I'm going to pick history. That sounds like something a guy who keeps secrets would do. And then we'll do, we already have religion, let's do Arcana. He knows about magic, history, and religion. Ho, ho, ho. Good stuff. Okay. And then you'll get different things at different levels. At second level, I can channel divinity to tap into a well of knowledge. So that's cool. All right. We'll pick spells out later. Three and two. So generally we have everything that we need to play. We just need weapons and stuff like that. However, we're also going to do our background. This is something that 5th edition did that I love. And Kevin, this is what you were talking about. Um, they give you a number of backgrounds that you can pick from. You can just make this stuff up if you want. But this is a great role playing tool. So this is like, what did you do before you were an adventurer? You could be an acolyte. Spent your life in the service of a temple to a specific god. That sounds like me. A charlatan. That's also cool. You've always had a way with people. You know what makes them tick. And you could tease out their heart's desires after a few minutes of conversation. That's awesome for my guy. Uh, but I'll, I'll give you them all to you. You guys can decide. So we have acolyte, charlatan, criminal. I was an old criminal before I became a cleric to the god of lies. I was an entertainer. I could have been an entertainer, our guy. Uh, my guy could have been a folk hero, hero of the people, a guild artisan building stuff, <coughs> a hermit living off in the woods all by myself, you know? I could have been noble, like uh, like I'm a bored teenager that decided to get into, like, worshipping the devil and crap, you know? <laughs> On daddy's dime. <laughs> If my character's a noble, I'm just saying, guys, this tiefling's going to wear a sweater vest, like, draped over his shoulders with the sleeves tied together uh, around the collar. Like, that's, that's, how it's, that's how it's going down. <laughs> He's going to drive a bitchin' Porsche. An outlander, someone who uh, lived in the wilds and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Oh. Oh, what's that? Sage. Sage is here. A sailor, a soldier, 
a street urchin. Um, there's different stuff in different books, like in Curse of Straw, there's the haunted one. You grew up like you were haunted. So what do you guys, what do you guys want my guy to be? So I'm thinking either the charlatan would be a lot of fun to be, or uh, I, I don't know, I kind of like that noble. Like maybe, you know, my Tiefling has perfectly like coiffed blonde hair. My daddy's a lawyer and he's going to hear about this. <laughs> But I don't know. I, I think the charlatan would probably make more sense. But you guys pick whatever, man. You, you could pick freaking Sailor and we'll do it. We'll make a character up with that. So I'll give you guys a minute here to pick. <clears throat> but yeah, these are really cool. And then they give you different personality traits. And again, you can, you can pick these. You can roll them. You could just make them up on your own. But they facilitate you role-playing a little bit better. And... Uh, that that can that's what makes it a lot of fun, I think. But it's always fun to roll randomly too. I dig that. So we'll give you guys a minute or two. You pick out what you want, and uh, like I said, I think then I'll roll for them. So I got to get my D D sixers out. Boom, baby. <laughs> What what did I say, Kevin? Was that was that about that noble <laughs> guy? I'm a no, I'm an old school noble cleric of um, Vecna keeping secrets. It's good stuff. I'm a, I'm that guy, the bad guy from One Crazy Summer, but <laughs> but I also worship the devil. So it's a good time. It's a good time. Mm. Ah, get some coke into me. Yep. So, uh, gonna give you guys just another thirty seconds here, and then we're gonna go. Unless you guys have anything else, I'm gonna go with the charlatan. I think that would be fun. And we can roll it up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that then. We'll go. We'll go with charlatan. Background, we'll put in charlatan. Charlatan, <laughs> see you later on the back. <laughs> well, here's the thing, here's the thing. We could still make our character have that personality type, you know, but still do that background. Or do you guys want to go with the, with the noble? I don't know. I don't know. History and persuade. Eh. Let's do charlatan to make it easier. <laughs> Let's go charlatan to make it easier because we already have history. Oh yeah, bitch and Porsche. <laughs> Got it. Daddy bought it for my 16th birthday. Don't you ever lay a hand on it. Alright, so... Being a charlatan gives us proficiencies in deception and sleight of hand, which is right here. It gives us tool proficiencies with a disguise kit and a forgery kit. And equipment. Equipment here, we don't need to worry about that. We'll just buy our own here. Favorite schemes. Now, this is fun. What's our favorite scheme? I'm going to roll that. D6. We got a four. My favorite scheme is I put on new identities like clothes. Nice. <clears throat> so we're going to do that. False identity. I've created a second identity that includes documentation. And establish acquaintances and stuff. So whatever my guy is, he has a second identity. Now let's roll for our personality traits, our ideals, our bonds, and our flaws. Let's see what this guy is like. First up, personality traits. Five. Oh no, that's a D. I need a D8 for that. Damn it.
Didn't it? I thought they were all these D D eight. Two. I have a joke for every occasion. Oh boy. Our ideals. What do we hold dear? That is a D6. Four. Creativity. I never run the same con twice. Bond. Two. I owe everything to my mentor, a horrible person who's probably rotting in jail somewhere. <laughs> what a loser. Uh, <laughs> okay. So let's see. Mentor in jail. And what's my flaw? Well, this character needs something wrong with him. Six. I hate to admit it and will hate myself for it, but I'll run and preserve my own hide if the going gets tough. Total coward. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Okay, <laughs> good stuff. All right, next thing we need are hit points. We get the maximum amount of our, our D8 hit points here. Constitution, minus two, which would mean we would get six. Now, I think 5th edition does not do it that way. I think in 5th edition, you get just the, it's, if it's, if you have a negative con, you get... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Blah, 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 blah. You get, um, it's just zero at that point. But let me look that up real quick if I can see it here. And if not, we'll play it old school, guys. We'll play it very old school. I think that's right in the beginning. Armor class, attributes, equipment, weapons, hit points, describe, proficiency, blah, 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 blah. that might be later here, trinkets, intelligence, constitution, hmm. I don't know, we'll just go old school style with it. Old school is the best school, says Eldritch Blast. Thank you. Current hit point maximum, six. Oh, God. Six hit points. This guy is going to be dead like ASAP. Okay. Next thing, starting equipment. Let's start with our funds here. Cleric, 5d4 times 10 gold. We're just going to do it that way. Let's get out some defos. And we'll go from there. The problem with this dice bag is the opening is so slim on it. Three, four, five. Okay, 5d4 times 10. Roll high. Kevin, we can, we can run the One Crazy Summer campaign. That sounds great. I want to be... <laughs> I'll totally tag the campaign by being the guy that sits in the room trying to win the radio show program, and I won't go adventuring. So we got one, two, three, that's six, four and four, that's eight. Six plus, ugh, six plus eight is 14 times 10, 140 gold. Let's spend it. I'm proficient with light armor and medium armor so what kind of armor do i want hmm considering that my considering i only have 140 or 160 gold to spend i'm gonna have to go with scale mail 50 gold so we're down to we're down to 110 so armor class 14 plus dex modifier which is zero so our armor class is 14. This guy is so flipping dead. You can't believe it. Um, 
bobcat. I love it. I love when he wears the Godzilla suit and stomps around. So we're down to 110. Should he take a shield for 10 gold pieces to increase his armor class by 2? Yes, he should take a shield. Bring us up to 16. That's not terrible. That could be a lot worse. So we're down to 100 gold pieces. Now I have to pick our weapons. Hmm. I think, too, that he's definitely going to have a dagger. Which is a finesse weapon. Which means he can use his dexterity modifier instead of his strength modifier. Which is good. Uh, his attack bonus... would be plus two proficiency bonus plus dexterity bonus so plus two damage 1d4 piercing it can also be thrown up to 20 feet which is flipping amazing if you've ever tried to throw in a dagger 20 feet good 60 feet wonky 60 feet Jesus that's that's far uh, let's see, simple weapons only, so let's see what's next, what would he take? Uh, ooh, I don't know, and that dagger costs two gold pieces, so we're down to 98. Let's do, he's got himself, uh, either a light hammer or a mace, we'll do a mace. Nah, we won't do a mace, that's, that's dumb. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. we will give him a sickle yeah we're going to do a sickle that's weird right one gold he's down to 97 uh, what's he do plus two minus one is plus one and it does 1d4 slash ouch this guy is not very good. Okay, so he's bad at fighting, but he's going to be banging with spells. So let's get back to Cleric, see what we got. He knows three cantrips and two first level spells, plus command and identify. So let's go back to our spells here. Bard, Cleric spells, cantrips. He knows three of them. Guidance, Light, Mending, Resistance, Sacred Flame, Spare the Dying, and Thaumaturgy. It already knows Thaumaturgy. Spare the Dying. Not in this edition, uh, Peggy. At least I don't think so. Used to be they could only use bludgeoning weapons back in the day. Unless it says, it might say that here. I might be completely mistaken. That would be a good catch. So let me check that out here. It says weapons, simple weapons. So that is, that's it. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't say anywhere that you choose just from bludgeoning. So simple weapons. I chose the dagger because that's like Vecna's like secret, secret thing, you know. But uh, if you want, we could change that to a mace. It would still be at the plus one to attack and just do 1d6. But it's up to you. Okay, so for our cantrips, in addition to com uh, well, command identify, aren't cantrips, but our cantrips, we're going to have um, mending. So we can fix stuff, which would be good. What is Sacred Flame? Let's find that out. Yeah, this edition really streamlines a lot of that stuff. Like that. Uh, bah, 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 bah. See Invisibility. Where's Sacred Flame? Target must succeed on a dex saving throw or take 1d8 radiant damage. So we're going to do Sacred Flame. Sacred Flame. 
And they have to do a DC 12. Uh, that's the spell save they have to do. And then for our final cantrip, we're going to take... What's resistance? Oh, you touch one willing creature. Target can roll D4, add the number to one saving throw. Yes, we're going to take that. My guy's going to need it. Okay. And then we get two first level spells. Bane, Bless, Command. Create or destroy water. Cure wounds. Detect evil. Detect magic. Detect poison. Guiding bolt. Healing word. Inflict wounds. Protection from good and evil. Purify food and drink. Sanctuary and shield of faith. Well, I think I want to take inflict wounds. That sounds good. Considering you can't attack for crap. Inflict wounds. Make a melee attacks. Make a melee spell attack, which is plus four, which is good. And on a hit, target takes three d10 necrotic damage, which is a lot. So we're gonna do that. Inflict wounds. Real quick, I want to check clerics here and make sure that spells known. Now that's spell slots. How many spells do I know? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Choose a number of cleric spells equal to your wisdom modifier plus your cleric level, which would currently be 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay. So I don't need to pick which spells I know. I can cast any of the spells on this list for first level. I pick three each day, basically. And I out of those three, I can cast two of them because I have two first level spell slots. So for today, I'm going to pick Inflict Wounds. I'm going to pick Cure Wounds. And let's see, I'm going to choose... How about Guiding Bolt? There we go. And we still left with, what was that, 97 gold pieces. And that's our character, guys. Well, Kevin, yeah, uh, the last times I was playing the forest was because my webcam uh, was down completely. Um, so that, that I needed to do something, so I did that uh, just in a pinch. So for this time, it was asked to do D&D-related stuff last week, so that's what we're doing. I still want to do some drawing, but yeah, I do want to expand the channel as well, talk about all kinds of stuff. So just kind of mixing it up a little bit for the time being. Mm. So that's our character, guys. Oh, we need to give him a name and an alignment. I'm going to make him Neutral Evil. Long may he pray. <laughs> Neutral Evil. And for the character name, I don't know. What's a good character name for this guy? Uh, Testicles. Uh, geez, I don't know. Evil Tiefling Cleric of Secrets. Let's call him Zalamax. That sounds evilly. Thordar, bastard son of Skull Crusher. <laughs> Rathlon, Thordar. So many, you guys. Well, you know what? Let's do that. His name is Thordar Rathlon Sun. Whisper of the Whim is a good one. Thank you, Eldritch Blast. 
You know what? You know what? He's got a second secret identity. He's got a secret, second secret family where his name is going to be Whisper. Whisper Whim. Thordar Rathlinson, a.k.a. Whisper of the Whim. He sells uh, black market secrets. He sells secrets on the black market. So good stuff. Jim. <laughs> Jared, that's that's his third identity is just Jim. <laughs> Jim Johnson. Okay, guys. So there we go. That's our dude. And that's how you make a character in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, oh, player name, Colin plus chat, and the experience points, big whopping zero as he's just starting out. Passive wisdom here is, I believe, eight plus your proficiency bonus, which is uh, two, so 10, plus your wisdom modifier, so 12. So not, not terrible, not incredibly terrible. So he's pretty bad at everything physical, and just okay at mental things. So he's going to survive a long time with his whopping six hit points. He's good at knowing things like arcana, history, religion. He's good at persuading people uh, and pickpocketing and deceiving people. Ooh. Yeah, Kevin, I, I hope. If they pay me, I'll switch to all Wizards of the Coast all the time. You know what? If they would pay me, I would run a Calls Cough Drop themed Dungeons and Dragons campaign live every freaking day. I don't know what a Hall's theme campaign would look like, but uh, I'd do it. I'd, I'd totally do it. So there we go, guys. That's how you do your dude in 5th edition. So we got about 15 minutes left. Let's draw him. Let's draw our tiefling cleric deceiver guy, Thordar Rathwilson, a.k.a. Whisper of the Whim, a.k.a. Jim. You know what? Let's start a new piece of paper. Old pieces of paper suck. Being that he's got the worst constitution ever, I'm going to make him kind of sickly looking. Let's do it like that. Let's give him a chinny chin chin here. Kind of a kind of a sly sly smile there. Upper lip. I don't know, you guys. Should he have a patch eye? Like, that might be kind of a thing. He's good at deception, so he can tell people, no, of course I'm not evil. Straight nose. Let's give him some... I don't know, guys. What do you think? Thin eyebrows or super bushy eyebrows? Sometimes I go yachting with the polo club. What's, uh... What was, um... Ted Knight's nephew's name in Caddyshack? I want a pork chop and I want a milkshake. No, I know what tigers eat their youngs. Rockly, thick eyebrows? Let's do it, man. And welcome to the stream. 
thin and thick eyebrow. Oh, no. <laughs> That's too many eyebrows, you guys. You picked both options. Both options, no. Billy, 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 Billy. <laughs> I love Caddyshack. That's, the, you know what? You know, we were just talking, Kevin, about the um, One Crazy Summer uh, role-playing game. I want to run, let's just, let's make it even a little more broad. The Snobs versus Slobs um, role-playing game. Scar that leads to his eye. Okay, we could do that. I like that. Maybe his eye should be, just like Vecna is missing an eye, maybe this guy should have like a messed up old eyeball. A snobs versus slobs role playing game set in like the late 70s, early 80s. And, uh, oh, that's so many possibilities. Like, maybe there can be a summer camp involved, like meatballs, you know? Like, I, I, I'm serious. I'm thinking about writing this and making it a thing. <laughs> the Snobs versus Slobs role-playing game. Let's give him some cheekbones, but I don't want him to look too, like, like a male model. I want him to look, like, emaciated, kind of. Give him some bags under the eyes. Spalding. Thank you, Kevin. Replace his glass eye when the vec that would be a banging campaign idea. Let's give him another scar down here on his chin. That. There we go. We can add in those emaciated cheekbones over here. He's like thin, but he can he can like persuade people with his silver tongue. I'm gonna give him kind of pointy ears, just a little bit. I don't want him to look too much like an elf, and we're gonna give him some freaking devil horns. Thank you very much, Tayshrin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And welcome to the stream if I haven't said already, so <laughs> I, I apologize. Sometimes words just leave my mouth and I cannot remember what they were. And you know what? Let's give him like a, like a complete piece of crap earring here. Like he's just too cool for school, you guys. This little one earring, one ear, yes, one earring, that's the way to do it. And then, I don't know if he's got big horns or just like a nice medium-sized horn. Kind of coming out. They drive people away, but it's so interesting. He's so alluring. Like, people are both repulsed, and at the same time, they, like, kind of want to know more about him. That's what makes him so dangerous. Except when he's in a fight. He's terrible. <laughs> Sterling Archer when he had cancer. One broken. Okay, Peggy, we could do that. So he's got the earring there. Let's make this one broken. His secret is he sucks. That's okay, man. I would I would totally play this character in a in a campaign. I think I could make it work. Even with the, the general like suckitude.
I think it would be fun. That's just it. I, I don't think there's a completely hopeless character. I think you can kind of make anything work just a little... You, know, you just have to really use your imagination. Try for the best. Shoot for the moon. If it doesn't work, that's, that's just it too. Shoot for the moon. If it doesn't work, you're going to have an interesting story. Remember the time I rolled up that tiefling cleric that just sucked? Everyone's going to go, yep, I, I totally remember that tiefling cleric. Didn't he have like three different names? Wasn't one of them Jim? And then let's give him going with the earring and his he's a complete like jock from a bad 80s movie. Let's give him a slick back like Patrick Bateman haircut here. So good. Taysha and I hear you on that. It, it can be so much fun just to have some whacked out, messed up character that nobody thinks is going to work. Because then if they work, if someone's like, wow, that dude, he did something awesome, then it's going to be memorable. And if they just, if they suck completely, again, super memorable. See, he's kind of rocking the little mullet there in the back. Yeah, oh yeah. Look at that. Oh, look at that haircut. That is terrible. And that's just it with D&D. &D. Like, as long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. So if you like min-maxing, if your party loves that kind of stuff, go for that. If you just like having a wackadoodle time, you should, you should join my campaign. <laughs> Yep, he's got a like a Jared Leto haircut there. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> he's like, ladies, would you like to join the church of Vecna? My name's Jim, and I'm going to be your, your cleric for the evening. So, uh, okay, he's definitely got the sweater vest that's here, that's tied around, so... Okay. So it would come up like this. Da, 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 da. So you got to erase this part. Da, 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 da. that and then he's got the the sleeves hanging down oh oh no <laughs> terrible over his armor oh geez next thing you know he's going to be vaping oh <laughs> oh no and then what kind of armor did he have? Let's see here. What do we pick? Scale mail? Something like that? I can't even remember. Homeless people's skin. <laughs> hey, babe, I graduated summa cum laude er, in the College of Interpersonal Chemistry. I love it. <laughs> And then he's got to have the the collared shirt there underneath. Oh, look at this guy. Yeah. You join the Church of Vecna. You know you would. Ladies. All right. And what's his name? Fordar. Rathlinson. Let's put some lightning bolts around there. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Fred, Fred from Scooby Doo. This is him. He he couldn't stand it anymore. His uh, love for Velma was so he just he couldn't keep it to himself anymore. AKA Whisper. Of the whim. AKA Jim. There we go. <laughs> Don't worry about it, babe. Check out this bitch in Porsche. My dad owns a car dealership. We're going to take it out up to the cabin for the weekend. <laughs> Oh man, Tayshran! If man, this is this is the stream D and D slash uh, Scooby Doo slash Vic. It's that that that's my life now. <laughs> Actually, there's a book called Meddling Kids, which I want to read, which is kind of about that. Oh, I should have given him a, a real. He's got the scar, but I should have given him a crappy like uh, soul patch. Man, I wish I would have done that. I will do it. Yeah, let's just, oh, let's, we got to do this. Yes, there, good. Good, it is now complete, people. It is now complete. <laughs> oh, my God. Good times, everybody. I had a lot of fun. I have my new D&D &D character ready to roll. So the next time I'm a player, uh, it's going to be wild and wonderful here. Oh, can't wait. And I always think drawing a picture of your D&D &D character is a ton of fun because then you get to show people. You're like, look, this is my guy, everybody. And they get to look at that and a little part of them dies inside. So what we're going to do next is tear it out of here. Tear off these little crumbly bits, whatever you might want to call them. And check it out, I'm proud of this. This is a good D&D &D tip. So you get your character sheet, you get your picture, you get a notebook. This is from 1987, I found this at my parents' house. So I must have had this when I was a kid. These are maps I drew. Let's get them out of here. This is our new character folder. Mead Fantasy Portfolio. I love it. And let's just look at that. Perfect. Right there. And you can take that right to your next game. And you're like ready to rock and roll. Throw in some scratch paper. Look at that dragon. Oh my god, I love it. I want this airbrushed on the side of my van so bad. And then on the other side <laughs> is this guy's face. So, good times. But that's it for the stream for today, guys. I gotta call it quits early. I gotta go pick up my wife and go do some more birthday stuff with her. So we're gonna pick it back up next Thursday. And I got a couple makeup streams I gotta pop in there. So I will throw information about when I'm doing that into... Uh, Facebook, follow me there, Colin Richards Art if you're not, Twitch, all the places, social media. Thank you all for joining in. I hope you enjoyed this weird, wonderful stream. Um, I'm going to go write the Scooby-Doo and D&D Slash Fic and the rules for the Snobs vs. Slobs role-playing game. I hope you guys will play when I come out. All right, till then, we'll see you guys later. Have a good night, and bye bye <laughs>